So this is an atomizer and it puts medication into a very fine spray in which they can go into the nose and be absorbed into the system. Typically when you're using an atomizer, you need to use a higher dose of medication. For example, if you're using a drug like Versed in a pediatric patient for sedation, you're probably going to have to use a little bit of a higher dose in order to get effective sedation. One of the nice things about the atomizer is that the mist is very quickly absorbed one of the key points to using an atomizer, however, is not to stick it into the nose straight up. You don't want to hit the septum, you don't want to go too high in. You just want to put the little tiny pointy plug here inside the nose, which I'm not going to do, and then tilt it a little bit outward so that you're actually hitting the mucosa on the outside of the nose. This area here, not the septum. When you go to distribute the medication, you need to do so in a very quick, rapid motion. So the motion is going to be something like this which is super fine mist that's gonna go inside the nose. You might wanna warn the patient before you do it because it might be a little bit of a shock to the system. One of the nice things about using an atomizer is that you can really put it on any syringe that you want. So in this particular one, we have a, a one ml syringe. Um, typically, I don't like to put more than one or two mLs of a solution in the nose. And if you're gonna do a larger dose of say three mLs, you may wanna consider doing additional doses. So spray one, take a break, and spray another one. The only other thing I would like to point out is that these are only one-time use, so after you're done with them you want to throw it out and don't reuse them on other patients. This is the box of Narcan that you can get at the pharmacy. You can pick it up at something like CVS or Walmart without a prescription, and it costs about $40 to $50 in those places, but some uh, pharmacies charge a lot more. This is uh, for home use or for use of a, with someone who's uh, using drugs that you're with, and uh, it has uh, two atomizers in it. This is the Narcan spray, and it's in a blister pack. Each of these atomizers has a one dose of four milligrams of Narcan in a small amount of fluid. It's only 0.1 mLs of fluid, so you have a relatively concentrated uh, solution. Hold it like this, stick it in the nose, and push and squirt and aim at the outside, not, the, not at the, uh, the avascular portion of the septum, but on the mucosa on the outside. So you put it a little bit uh, lateral. One dose, four milligrams, should work in about a minute or two. If it doesn't work in a minute or two, there's a second dose in the box, give them the second dose. Four milligrams over a few minutes should be quite uh, helpful in reversing it. There have been some paramedic studies about the use of this. The most common way that, par that paramedics deliver naloxone these days is by the nasal spray. However, um, you can also give it IM or IV. Uh, the nasal spray has the least uh, effective uh, method. May maybe due to dose, maybe due to how it's given, um, but the, the, the most failures. Failures means that they don't wake up or they have to be intubated. So if you can do it intravenously or, uh, or intramuscularly, That'd be good. There is an intramuscular, but it's very, very expensive. Uh, I think it's five or six hundred dollars, and it is an IM injection that you can give of Narcan. Uh, 
all by yourself. Inside of each Narcan spray is an instruction sheet that tells how to use it. Basically says you put the patient down if there's signs of opioid overdose and you squirt it in the nose. They should be supine when you do this. Um, it probably would work if they're sitting up if you can't get them down on their back. And uh, I don't know how many people have time to read this before you would give it, but the pictures on how to use it should be relatively straightforward. To my right is Dr. Edward Bernstein, an emergency physician who has some special expertise in Narcan uh, and the development of it, and he's going to tell you exactly what he's done. Hi, I work at the Boston Medical Center, and for the last 30, 30 years, I've really been fortunate to, to be in a place that has been paying some more, more and more attention to addiction, and especially the opiate crisis. And in uh, 19, uh, 1994, I started a program called Project Assert. It was uh, people from the community who were in recovery came in to help us to, uh, with, uh, to communicate better with our patients and find them uh, treatment. And as the opioid crisis evolved, we, we the same group of peer educators and uh, licensed alcohol counselors took on the role of uh, educating the patients about overdose, provided them with an all can that was provided from the state, and and distributed to friends and family. So for, since uh, but that wasn't enough to deal with the crisis that we're facing now, so we started a clinic called the Opioid Urgent Care Center that integrates the peer model, social social model with uh, general internal medicine's interest in buprenorphine and suboxone uh, to help our patients have a leg up in the treatment of addiction. So we're trying to provide more menus of options for our patients, but Narcan has been at the center of it. And we co-prescribe our buprenorphine and our Narcan, and we also educate people of the, you know, the, the consequences of overdose, how to recognize it, and how to, how to deal with it. What is the Narcan that you give them? Is it uh, the spray? Yes, let me just show you. This has made all the difference because instead of having to assemble it, it's right in your hands, just like a nose spray. You just squirt it up the nose. We find under, with, with this new fentanyl uh, aspect of our overdose deaths that you need maybe two to four of these in order to revive people. Uh, well, many of our peers in, that work in our emergency department have carried it in their pocket and have saved a number of lives that uh, overdosed in our bathroom. So this is a big problem for everyone to, just like we have AEDs, at this, at this conference, we need to have knock-in on everybody's person so that uh, wherever they are, there's a chance that they can save a life. Four milligram dose usually enough, do you think, for most overdoses? No, I think with fentanyl, you need at least two of these. Oh. So this, each one of these gives four milligrams, so right. you, it has a total of eight milligrams, in right. it, which is... Uh, and sometimes more. And Sometimes even IV, you need eight to ten milligrams. Right. But the, the, the commitment we're making, too, is that after we revive them, we don't want them to get up in, and leave on us, and we want to try to engage them. So we have a model called PEERS. So we page our, our team to the emergency department, the, the licensed alcohol drug counselors. E, we evaluate them. Uh, another E for PEERS, we educate them about the, you know, the overdose and how to prevent it from happening again. R is referrals to treatment if they're interested. And S is a safe discharge. So last week, I was able to contact a family member after an overdose and patient who came to me for buprenorphine and, and with the patient's permission, call up his mother and get him a ride to a safe place. Again, Ed. Glad, you, glad you're still around. Jim, you, you had a big influence in my career. Oh, really?